So you want more power and distance. Working on the second level bat speed, which comes from the rotation of the wrist snap within the rotation of the hips, almost doubles the speed in which the bat head whips to impact. It's why pros go 500 feet plus, and it's a switch senior and rec players turn on to add 40 or 50 feet, sometimes without knowing where the power comes from. The beauty of this is it also brings consistency and the ability to hit the top or bottom of the ball at the same swing. Arm extension within the rotation of the hips is what sets up the explosive lag and snap. From the connected position as we start our explosive hip rotation, the hips will start to rapidly bring the hands and the knob of the bat around in an arc. If we want to create a powerful lag and snap in the second level of bat speed, we need to extend our arms in rapid burst to stab the knob forward and slightly up. So we extend beyond just rotation and create the lag of the bat head. This is an extremely dynamic move and it feels like the hips and arms stab the knob ahead. It creates a lag of the bat head and the following abrupt snap or whip of the bat head into impact with the ball. If you use the hips and both arms and hands to create this extension and stabbing motion, the following snap will be violent, too fast to analyze, and will create that double pendulum or second higher level of bat speed. You'll feel the wrist torque automatically, thus you feel the snap, but don't have to force it. We have some drills today that are really going to help you enhance your ability to get that explosive extension lag and snap within the hip rotation. And two of the drills that we've used already and have been shown in previous episodes are the slide tube and the perfect snap. In the slide tube, what we want to make sure we do is get that explosive stab in there. It does a great job naturally teaching you to do without overthinking, but I think we can go ahead and emphasize a little bit more to make sure we're getting and maximizing that extension within the rotation. So begin your stance lower and reach your foot ahead real nice and easy, then use your hips, have that angle so that we take the slide tube at that slide up angle, so we drive the ball up as a line drive, and then just stab. It's a very violent motion. Easy, explode. And if it's very short, when people say short to the ball, you can see that it doesn't take very far to stab this far, just ahead of your body. That's going to vary, of course, by pitch selection, but to stab this far, when you stop your stab, the bat head will abruptly fly around into the snap. So if you do that on the slide tube, easy, stab and snap and let the rope tension give you just a little bit of a snap feeling before it gets tight and you stop. Stab and snap. And you can sit and go stab, stab. Your hip rotation is what brings that, your hands initially forward from the connected position, but you want to get outside that rotation just to the body with a little bit of extension so you create the lag and the snap as we talked about earlier in the show. One thing is as we age and as we get sport related injuries, we get a tendency not to want to do this motion. It's very dynamic, it's a very brutal motion on the body because it's so explosive. Uh, I've had a disc in my back that's been herniated for two years. I went to Softball Magazine Spring Training last month and only took 30 swings because it really hurts to do this motion. So for those of us that have injuries and age, arthritis, bad knees, do less reps but make sure we do it properly so we don't end up just swinging we don't want to end up just swinging around in a slow arc like this. We want to get that snap within it and we want to create that lagging snap with the stab. You can see over the slide tube here as I stab the bat now forward, my hips are rotating and I'm stabbing short to the ball, but when I abruptly end my stab and let the bat flip through, you get a great snap at that angle. And it's very consistent too, you can hit the top or bottom of the ball wherever you aim. 
second drill that we use and we've introduced before is the perfect snap drill. And rather than fighting gravity and trying to snap at an up angle, we let gravity help us. We use our hips again, our arm is fairly straight, a little bit of a flex in this, we can still extend and get that stabbing motion. But let's use gravity to help us go down. Turn the hips and stab, stab and snap to the point of impact. And you get the feeling of the wrist torquing. You get the feeling of how the wrist should be working. But more than anything else, just the stabbing motion, if you use both hands equally, this one stabs here, this one stabs here, we let gravity help us, we stab to there, and the bat head will flip on its own. That's why the pros always say they feel the snap, but they don't force it. So to hit into a hanging object like a mule bag or just a hanging uh, Everlast bag I have here, you can go ahead and lower, stab, stab, and then finally let it cut loose on the snap. And just let yourself go into a stab, stab, and then the third one, cut loose with the snap. You'll find that the more explosively you stab short and quick within the framework of your rotation, the bat head's going to want to whip on its own. So all four of these drills are going to do a really good job of helping you get that bit of stabbing motion and lag and snap within the rotation of your body and your swing. And by getting that, you're going to pick up that extra bat speed. Now you're going to find that you have a lot of consistency with the two. It's going to help you develop a point of contact that's correct so that you're always catching the ball on the snap rather than a head on the roll. A few more tips. A higher pitch is easy to drive up, producing a higher trajectory ball that carries further. Hit the bottom half of the ball for underspin and it's extra carry. That's why evil BPs are great training balls. An unloaded bat like the Chris Larson CL22 gives more mass at the end, thus more power into the ball. And it allowed Larson to win a second Long Haul Bomber Stadium Championship last year. Other resources are Big Cap Mike Misenko's Bat Speed Drill access off his website. Mike's a legendary player and has a great website full of good information. My friend Dave at Senior Softball Bat Reviews has a wealth of information on training, bat reviews, and supplements. Both he and Billy Blake are tremendous power hitters, and their information I find awesome. Super respected senior players. Besides our analyzing and correcting and blasting bomb spraying singles DVDs, a DVD I'd recommend is Bob Waldike's Powerful Hitting Secrets. Wally's as good as any power hitter I've ever seen. And if all else fails, consult the world's most powerful hitter. His batting average is infinity. He once made it out, just to see what it felt like. But the umpire awarded him first base anyway. He will mingle with the common man, but not for long. For he is the most powerful hitter in the world. I don't always swing senior bats, but when I do, I prefer the DeMarini. Stay in loaded, my friends. Your staff does an amazing job of a quick turnaround year round, but if somebody wants something and has enough time to think about it ahead of time, what's the, what's the best time you to order something? Uh, the best time to order is starting in December, but generally, Ken, we're usually about uh, three weeks for a turnaround and we do have the ability to rush options uh, in as fast as five days as needed as you need to fill in for extra players or you just actually forgot to order when you needed to.